Deputy Pringle, you've been waiting for a while. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, the number of questions, hopefully, we'll get through them within the, the required time frame. I just would like to refer back to Deputy Daly's question that he asked earlier on in relation to, um, and especially that, so from, from what I gather from what he, your responses have been, is that neither Irish Water or SER can say whether a single utility is providing the service at a lower cost than 34 local authorities were. All you can actually say is that Irish Water has reduced its cost by 14% since 2014. That's a fair, is that a fair reflection of what the answer to that question say, was? We can absolutely say that we're providing it at a lower cost. What we can't show is the quantum that the deputy is saying that that is by. We've looked at the benchmark going into 2013, 2014 based on 2013 costs, and we know that we're delivering it at less. We know we're delivering it at less. We're not saying or claiming we're delivering it at anything less than the numbers that the regulator is validating, which is the 70 million savings today. And those 70 million savings are based on a like-for-like -like basis, 34 local authorities at the end of 2013, Irish Water working with local authorities at the end of 2016. It's a 70 million saving that we've made in procurement, in terms of how we organise the work, in terms of overall headcount reductions, and that is coming but yet, from... But yet you can't say what the figure was in 2013. We can't go back to 2010 because we weren't involved in 2010 or 11. But you're after 2013 as well. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, Commissioner, sorry. would like to come in there. Sorry, Deputy, just, that's okay just to, help to follow up the on that. Well, uh, while we don't have, let's say, the data for 2010 or 2011 in relation to costs, what we do know is that from our analysis that Irish Water, at this stage of its evolution, is a high-cost utility. We, we would expect that because it has inherited uh, 34 different water authorities, but our analysis would indicate that they're up to twice the cost that of an efficient utility. So what we will be doing over the, uh, this revenue control and the following revenue controls is ensuring that they deliver the efficiencies to get down to the level of efficient operation of, uh, or level of cost of an efficient operation. So we would expect that uh, that reduction to be delivered uh, over time. So that, that's part of our role. Okay. Um, just in relation to the presentation earlier from Irish Water as well, just in, in relation to the, the nine water treatment plants delivered, 18 upgraded, 32 wastewater treatment plants upgraded and 27 new plants built. How many of those projects were initiated by Irish Water since 2014, brought through design and planning stages and brought to construction and delivered? I, I, can't tell you, um, I can tell you that the, the programme of work that came in from the public capital programme we took on and, and kept going, so there was quite a lot of those projects were, were, were started in some shape. They had plenty of permission somewhere on site. Uh, many more, like the, the, the water for plants, for example, uh, we, we proceeded to contract with, modified them somewhat, and, then, and they have been completed. So I can't give you the exact number. Obviously, it's increasing all the time. But as I said, it was a continuous programme. What we did was those plants that were committed and contracted, we continued with. All the rest of them we rescoped uh, and reprioritized and then continued with the ones that we wanted to continue with. So basically, Irish Water has benefited from the design work that was done by the 34 inefficient local authorities. Of course, yes, of course. We, we, we threw nothing away. On that and benefited from that. Yeah. So it's not really fair to say, be quoting the figures here of what you've delivered, really, because that work was done by somebody else. Well, um, I can tell you that at the end of 2013, a, a huge number of projects were stalled, and they were stalled for lack of, for lack of uh, uh, commitment by the local authorities to go ahead with them because of the, the particular way that charging was, the funding was at the time, and 25% local funding. So enough of the projects were stalled, which we took up and got going, and, and, and that fed into the 2014 programme uh, and into 2015. Now, more and more of our own projects have been coming through in 2014-15 and are now being completed and, and going to site. And so so the, differ the, difference, the difference is the government gave you the ability to have, raise the money to do it, where they didn't give the ability to the local authorities to raise the money to do it. No, I would say it would have made absolutely no sense for us to stop the work that had been done or the public money that had been invested in designs and projects that were what we called in flight. It made no sense for us to do that. Whether some of those projects made sense or not, at least they were delivering improved services. So the first thing we did was we kept a continuity of service. Nobody had any diminution in service from a transfer from 30 for local authorities to a single utility on the operations side and the frontline service, which is a credit to the local authority staff. We took all of the capital works, we rationalised them, but it made no sense and it would be scandalous for us to stop and throw out work that was done. What we've done is added to that significant new projects as well. We don't know the mix of them, but yes, there were some in flight and some that were at the early design stage. We took that over and added to that, and that's the total cumulative outcome to the end of 2016. Okay, thanks. Thank now, the other, the other question just in relation to costs, um, Dave. Expert group recommendation is that we don't bill 
household for individual bills charges. I was just wondering, could you give us a breakdown so that it can feed into our work here of the cost of the billing cycle, plus the reading, uh, sending out the bills, the collection process, and, um, and also the cost of the tender of, for the debt collection agency that you have tendered, um, and also the cost of operating the call centre. We need a breakdown of those figures because that would have an impact on the ongoing savings that could be achieved from cancelling the project, project as well. Would you have those to hand now, or can you provide them to us? Well, I, I can take just, uh, just on the, um, the ongoing cost of, of billing, an annual cost for the domestic billing was 20, is 25 million. Of that, 13 million is bill processing, everything connected with bill processing. Uh, 10 million is relating to the contact, t contact centre, and there's 2 million just on, in terms of staff costs. So that's the overall 25 million cost. Okay, thanks. That's grand. Okay, final question, Chairman. I've still, I think I've still within time, just about. Um, the metering programme and the efficiency of the, the expenditure on the metering programme. By your, own, by your own figures here, in the first fixed scheme has saved 17 million litres of water um, at a cost of 465 million euros. Um, by, by installing the meters to actually det detect that one percent, which accounts to for one percent of the unaccounted for water in total in the system. So I just wonder, does that represent um, efficiency and value for money? Um, and maybe that would be to both of <coughs> Well, I mean, first of all, clearly the metering programme was not installed to find leaks. It was installed as part of the whole process of government so policy. So the metering programme wasn't a conservation measure? It wasn't installed to find leaks alone. The metering programme was installed We as were part told it was a conservation measure, that the water, the metering programme was important to conserve water. So the metering programme was part of government policy, which is around the whole setup of a utility and charging for water. One of the benefits, one of the benefits of the metering programme is that it gives us absolute clarity on the usage of water in each household, which allows us accurately pinpoint the leakage. But we can say as well, and that's a benefit based of it. on Welsh water work and Thames water work, that when you have meters, a first fixed program, a customer fixed program, is the cheapest water you will recover, and that's proven by the 70 million litres. Uh, there's no way that we could have got, got that, that back as quickly or as cheaply, uh, having got the meters, than by using them to find those leaks and target them.